Monaco 64 here, uh, home of alternative economics and contrarian views. So I want to talk about the oil price. Uh, usually we just look at it in dollars, but I've had a, a look today at the, the oil price. Uh, Brent crude I've taken in different currencies. And I think things are starting to look uh, a bit uh, precarious for the system. Oil, of course, is really important. It's what drives all the economies. Uh, you need oil to transport everything. Without transportation, of course, uh, there is no economy. So I think we need to keep an eye on it. I mean, everyone, uh, even me, we, I've been fo we focus on the interest rates and other things. But uh, the oil price is definitely uh, looking uh, like it uh, could be a problem. And that's what I want to talk about. Hi, everyone. Hi, Eric. Uh, you're first. Oscar Sferd, he's second. Hi, Oscar. Bitcoin Belize. Hey. Ann Holloman. Hi, Ann. Terry Rabidou. Hi, Terry. So uh, just I'm a little early, but uh, we'll just uh, wait a little bit until everyone comes on. So as I was saying, uh, it looks like uh, the oil price, not only in dollars, but in all other currencies, uh, it's going up quite a lot. I've done an analysis of the last six months uh, on uh, several uh, oil and several prices, uh, sterling, euro, Aussie dollar, Chinese yuan, Brazilian real, and the dollar. And I've looked at the Brent crude. Um, I could have looked at uh, WTI, but I've looked at Brent. Uh, so let's see who else we've got here. Uh, Dennis Castillo, inflation is in the works. That's why uh, you why go and get gold now. Yeah, I agree. I mean, gold and silver have come off today, but I don't think that's going to last that much longer. Um, the inflation has really happened already in the last, you know, 46 years. Uh, since Bretton Woods, and especially in the last 10 years, uh, the oil price going up is only a consequence of inflation. Oil, I'd like to uh, clarify, oil doesn't cause inflation. Uh, oil is only a consequence of, you know, price of oil going up is a consequence of inflation, too much uh, money pre printing. Neboza Yerebica, good evening. Hi, I hope I pronounced your name correctly. Gold and silver and crypto is being killed. Um, not really. I don't agree with that. I mean, uh, if, if you look at, uh, yeah, gold is down today, uh, half a percent. But for example, the pound is down uh, 0.84 of a percent. The euro is down 0.8 of a percent. So uh, not really uh, too concerned about that. Uh, the Dow, of course, uh, was down a lot today before the U.S. Open. It's re rebounded. Uh, after the U.S. came out and said that they're not going to punish China, then and now it's back down, though. I, I think people are realizing that oil could be a spanner in the works. Uh, if people remember well, uh, before the uh, 08 crisis, the price of oil ran up all the way to almost $150. And uh, I think uh, I know the subprime uh, crisis was important to bring the system down. But the oil price didn't help consumers either. Uh, good, uh, let's see uh, who else. Uh, Kevin Belcher, Monaco, what do you think will come of the Trump-Putin summit? Uh, to be honest, I haven't looked too closely into that. We'll have to, to wait and see. Uh, do you recommend buying oil TFs? Uh, well, yeah, I mean, may, you could, but I don't like ETFs. I think the best thing to do is to stay stick with your uh, commodities like gold and silver. Uh, you could buy maybe some oil stocks. Uh, I don't like ETFs because they're uh, counterparty risk. A lot of times they're written by banks, but you could look into an oil ETF. Christopher Hen Hensworth from uh, Brisbane. Hi, Christopher. Dollar index up. Yeah, the dollar index is up, but uh, you know the the price of uh, oil. If I'm going to go through now the price of oil, uh, you know Brent crude. I've looked at it this afternoon in several currencies. So, for example, 
in sterling in the last six months. And this is taking the price from about a few hours ago. It's come off slightly since then. But in sterling in the last six months, the price of oil has gone up from 47.38 to 59. So that's up 24.6% in six months, which is 49% annualized. I mean, if you don't think rising oil prices are going to hurt, not hurt the economy, you, you have to be kidding. Uh, so euro, uh, the price has gone from 53 to 67, so up 25.5%. And the weaker currencies against dollar, not helping either. Aussie dollar, uh, price of oil has gone from 82 to 105. That's 28%. And that's a 56% uh, increase annualized in the last six months. Uh, China, the price of oil is up 23.6%. Brazil, where things are getting really bad, uh, the price of oil is up 45% in, in six months. Annualizing is up almost 100%. And in the U.S., even though the dollar index has been strong, uh, the dollar is down 24% against uh, uh, the oil price. So, um, and up 48% annualized. So I think oil could be uh, what uh, really tips the system over. Uh, so we need to keep an eye on it. I'll also be taking your questions, of course, this evening. Uh, D nuts. Hey, Mario, what's up from Palm Beach? <laughs> I dumped my crypto profits for some gold. Well, why not? I mean, if you've got profits on it, I still have my crypto. I, I've got my uh, EOS. I've been getting a lot of uh, airdrops for uh, tokens that haven't started trading yet, but they've been free airdrops for having EOS. Um, hi, Philip. How are you doing? Mario, I heard Saudi Aramco has oil that like 80% water. Yeah, I've read a lot about that. Uh, I've got a book here. I'll show you. Where is it? Uh, this is a good book, Twilight in the Desert, uh, The Coming Saudi Oil Shock and the World Economy. Uh, and it basically this guy, uh, Matthew Simmons, he was like a, a top uh, oil investment banker. He went to Saudi Arabia many times, and he, he was talking about the fact that uh, the Saudi oil fields, they, they've been he, having to use a lot of water and that there's not as much oil in Saudi Arabia. Unfortunately, he died a few years ago uh, under suspicious circumstances. You know, after that Horizon uh, incident, uh, that uh, BP incident, Horizon in the Gulf, he criticized BP, and a few weeks later, he died of a heart attack in his jacuzzi. Uh, Matthew Simmons, a uh, really good book. Uh, let's see. Michael Piotrovsk. Hi, Mario. What do you think about Shanghai stock drop 21%? Yeah, I mean, the Chinese uh, you know, uh, financial situation hasn't been good. Uh, and uh, I think uh, you know they've they've had to cut reserve requirement rates uh, lately, but uh, I think people shouldn't really. I mean, they should focus on what's happening uh, in oil and the bigger picture. Uh, yeah, Billy is not here. Uh, he he's he's upstairs uh, with my daughter today. So. Um, Which wallet do I use for EOS? Right now I'm using uh, Simple Simple EOS, Simple OS, Simple EOS. It's a pretty good wallet. Any reason why you moved from England, the England flag pillows and the US flag and replaced with Canada? And what is the Welsh flag? Well, that's the, uh, the American and the uh, British are in the back here. So I didn't replace them, I just moved them around. That's the weak. Wyvern flag, that's the flag uh, before the uh, Norman conquest of, uh, of, Eng of England. So that's the original Anglo-Saxon flag. That's one of my viewers uh, who uh, uh, 
yeah, he he uh, told me about that, and it's one it's his thumbnail on Steam as well. So I, I thought I, I'd buy that. Yeah, oil is exploding, and uh, I've been. I think people really need to need to look at. It started, uh, you know, in Iran. I've seen that there were riots yesterday, and even though Iran is an oil producer, uh, you know, the price of oil even there has gone up because their currency is dropping. And uh, I think personally, it's the uh, Americans. Uh, they need the price of oil up to keep the dollar up. Why? Why is that? Well, because. Uh, if the price of oil goes up, all the other countries, uh, they they need to pay for their oil in dollars. So they're short dollars. So they have to buy dollars to buy the oil, buy the oil. And I think that's what's happening. Uh, I think the, the fact that the dollar is going up is not a sign of strength of the dollar. Uh, it's just uh, the fact that other countries are suffering and they're having to buy dollars because the price of oil is going up. Uh, but uh, if you look at the price of oil from 2002 to 2008, it went from 40 to like 150. And uh, the dollar index dropped from 120 to like 80. So I don't think the dollar is going to stay up for that much longer. And it, even if it stays up, I think we, we will see commodities starting to go up, especially gold and silver. I know gold and silver are down today, but... Uh, I still, uh, you know, they're doing well against the other currencies. It's just a dollar that's uh, strong by default. Are you happy with the rise of oil? Well, uh, I'm just observing it. Uh, I think it's, uh, it could, uh, it, it's a sign, a, a symptom of inflation that we've had for 46 years. And especially after the last 10 years, they, you know, the more money they print, the central banks, it's going to come out, out somewhere. And I think it's commodities are going to be next. And that's what oil is telling us. Your content is gold. Uh, what do you mean by that, SDAC? Um, I talk about all markets, precious metals included. And I think precious metals are more important than ever, even nowadays. Uh, it's a protection against the uh, debasement of the currency, and that's what we're seeing. And uh, all currencies are going to go down against commodities, uh, gold, oil, soft commodities. It, it just takes time, but I think oil is pointing towards it. I think uh, Deutsche Bank actually uh, went lower than nine. It, the low today in Deutsche Bank was eight uh, euro seventy five. Uh, havoc, uh, havoc, Schorst. Yeah, yeah, it was below eight uh, euros the dollar. Uh, the the Deutsche Deutsche Bank uh, stock stock today. Right now, well, it closed at uh, nine, so it rebounded quite a bit. So it was below nine dollars, uh, nine euros. Sorry, it was eight euros seventy four, and it closed just above nine euros at Deutsche Bank. But as I said, all banks, all the big international banks are in trouble, not just Deutsche Bank. Eric, uh, which commodities other than gold and silver do you recommend? Well, I think uh, the soft commodities, you know, uh, they're still lagging, uh, you know, uh, oil, for example. So, yeah, gold, silver, you know, all the softs, the grains. They're still really under, undervalued, and I think they're going to go higher. And even if the economy slowed down, people will say, oh, it's not good for commodities. But no, it's a sign of uh, stagflation I think we're going to get. John Roberts, what's going on with Brexit? Well, Brexit... Uh, well, it's supposed to happen by March 2019. Right now, the politicians are, you know, I don't really follow it. They're just <laughs> debating left, right, and center. Uh, I think they're going to use uh, Brexit as an excuse for the system. Uh, today, I saw that uh, the governor of the Bank of England is having a go at the EU, that they could create uncertainty in the markets, derivatives market. And uh, I think they're going to use it as a cover 
for a possible implosion of the system. That's what Brexit is. It's just a scapegoat for the powers that be, uh, for the fact that they didn't fix anything after 08. So I think Brexit, Brexit is irrelevant. Oh, uh, Mary, he means your content is awesome. Oh, yeah, I got that. Uh, yeah. Sorry, uh, SDAC. Uh, I didn't realize. Thank you. Yeah, these nuts. I have looked at platinum. We are at very low levels. That's true. Um, you know, uh, you definitely versus oil, for example. If you long oil, you definitely might want to sell oil and buy platinum as a spread. I don't follow the platinum market too closely, but the, yeah, I saw that uh, we're near uh, mo you know you know lows from the last couple of years. Uh, MR banks will be get bailed out again. I'm not sure about that. I, if they do, if they bail out the banks again, I think there will be uh, loads of uh, protests, riots, because uh, they were supposed, you know, they bailed out the banks, all right, in 08, 09, and uh, people said, okay, fine. But people were told that everything's been fixed now that it wouldn't happen again. So I don't think that they'll do, they'll be able to, they might be able to do it, but it will be politically, it will be explosive. TNT TV, this is reminding me of summer of 08, rising oil prices. Yeah, that's right. I, I just spoke about that. The fact that oil almost got up to $150 uh, if you look, uh, I was talking earlier in this uh, live stream about the price of oil uh, in the other currencies, not just the dollar. For example, uh, in Australian dollars, the price of oil has gone up 28% in the last six months, which is a 56% annualized rate. In Brazil, it's gone up by 91% on an annual basis in the last six months. In, in the UK, uh, oil has gone up 25 percent in the last six months. So that's going to seep through onto the rest of the economy. The most important uh, part of every economy is transportation, because you know goods have to be, to be transported, uh, you know, from place to place. And what do you need to transport goods? You need oil, you know, fuel. So I think it's going to be really important. Eric Z, Mario. Uh, when you buy gold coins, how important is it to buy NGC certified? Uh, that's just for numismatics. <laughs> I don't. Here in the UK, if you go to a gold dealer, you just buy the coin. Uh, that's for collectors. So uh, I don't uh, really care about NGC certified. I just go to a reputable dealer, and I know that I'm buying a gold coin. But if you're going to be collecting coins, yeah, it could be good to get NGC. But I don't like the little plastic uh, thing that they put the coins in. You can't hold them. So, yeah. Truth, money, and freedom. Hey, Maneko, I have a question for you. Uh, folk are talking about a big collapse. The rich are getting richer and the poor are getting poorer. Seems like the elite are loving it. Why would they not wish to keep the system running as it is? Um, well, they are getting richer, uh, I guess, but they could get even richer uh, if they're prepared for it. And then they can buy a lot of assets really pen for pennies on the dollar. So you never know. They pump and dump and then buy again. That's how they do it. That's how they've been doing it for years. Andre Bates, should I invest in buying some China Chinese you want backed by gold and oil? Um uh, I don't think we you should try to complicate things. Just stick to, uh, you know, protecting yourself against the dollar going down. The best thing for that is gold, uh, oil. You could uh, invest in uh, some kind of uh, energy, oil, energy companies. But uh, it's, 
exposure to the yuan, you might want to have that, but uh, the yuan hasn't really done that well either. For example, uh, the oil price in yuan has gone up 23.6%, while in dollars, the oil price has gone up 24.8%. So yeah, the dollar might look uh, strong, but in the last six months, the dollar hasn't gone anywhere against all the other currencies because uh, in sterling, uh, we've gone up 24.6%, the oil price, and in dollars has gone 24.18%. So is the dollar really strong? No. I think all the fiat currencies are starting to weaken. Uh, there's my cheerleader, MM. No. Hey, guys, show Maneko the love. Mash the like button. Yeah, and don't don't forget about the uh, super chat donation if you'd like to donate. That would be nice. Uh, let's have a look. What else? Daryl Lowry. Recently in the alt media, there has been a bit of a row how silver will revalue relative to gold during the next great reset. What do you say? Well, usually uh, silver outperforms in the precious metals bull market. So, but uh, I think some people are saying that in a hyperinflation, gold would outperform. And that's true. Uh, in Weimar, Germany, even though silver went up a lot, gold went up, went up even more because gold is much easier to uh, carry than silver. So if you're buying a, a big amount of uh, silver monetarily, it's very bulky, while gold is not as bulky. So gold tends to outperform in a hyperinflation. But in a in stagflationary inflationary environment, silver will out, outperform. Uh, thank you, Richard Mack, for the uh, donation on Super Chat. Uh, let's see here. Gary Abbott, Mario, don't forget you owe me a video on how deficit spending has inflated GDP in recent years. Hi, Gary. I can tell you right now. Thanks, everyone, for the uh, Patrick for the thumb super chat thumbs up. Uh, I'll tell you that right now, Gary. Basically, GDP is calculated. Uh, GDP equals uh, uh, consumption, uh, investment, uh, exports minus imports plus government spending. So, if uh, the UK, for example, in the last ten years. I would say the deficit spending has been on average about 45% a year. So what that means, if GDP, let's say, was growing by 4%, uh, but the government, uh, the budget deficit is 4%, that means that the government is spending 4% more than they're taking in. And that 4% deficit, if it wasn't there, if they were balanced, the book was, books were balanced, the GDP would be zero. And why would it be zero? Well, because uh, government has spent 4% more than they take in as a percentage of GDP. So if you look at the last 10 years, the GDP growth in the UK has been usually less than 2%, sometimes a little more than 2%, but between 1% and 2 and the deficit is being like, uh, yeah, running at 4%. I know now it's back down to 2 but for the last 10 years, it's been like 4% 4, 4 on average. So I would argue that the deficit, uh, the GDP is actually being negative 2%. And that's not even counting for uh, inflation because the GDP also uh, takes into discounts the rate of inflation. But we know governments underestimate inflation, so the GDP looks even, you know, better. So I would say, yeah, the UK has been shrinking by three to four percent a year for the last ten years. Uh, I know the we're not told that by the media or the statisticians or the government, but that's what's happening. You know, why do you think Trump came up with the tax cuts and the huge deficit spending? They're going to have deficits now 5, 6, 7 percent in the U.S. That's why uh, his economic advisor yesterday, Navarro, Navarro came out and said, oh, we're going to see 4 percent GDP. Of course, you're going to see 4 percent GDP because the government's spending 5 percent more than they should. They've got a budget deficit of 5 percent. So a 4 percent GDP with 5 percent deficit. This actually means that the real wealth-producing 
part of the economy, the private economy, is only grow, you know, is actually shrinking by one percent. Full team of geek, uh, thanks for the uh, the donation on super chat. Uh, uh, you're welcome. I, I, I do post on Steam it all the time. You know, I put all my videos on DTube, which goes into Steam it. Yesterday, I wrote uh, an article on Steam it with all the photos from my visit to uh, the city of London yesterday and to the Bank of England Museum. Yeah, that Pepe Escobar interview was good, wasn't it? He's a clever guy. Uh, Nasdaq Samaria, what gold does? Nothing doesn't even pay interest. Useless. Uh, while gold uh, is money, that's why it doesn't pay interest. The only way money pays interest is if you lend it. Uh, so all the European uh, countries right now, interest like in, in Europe, interest rates are negative. So actually, if you keep money in the bank, euros, it's actually <laughs> you're paying the bank. So gold, gold is uh, money and it's insurance. Uh, it may be useless to you, but not to me. Explain your analysis on how oil price could bring down the system. Thank you, Manako. Uh, that's from John Ravinius. Well, John, uh, the thing is that uh, oil is such an important part of the, the whole economy everywhere with transportation, shipping, uh, and if the cost of transportation and shipping and fuel uh, goes up, it's gonna affect uh, consumption, it's gonna affect prices, it's gonna, and in the last six months, for example, the price of oil has gone up around 50% on an annualized basis in all the major currencies. Even the US dollar, it's gone up 48%. At, at per annum in the last six months. So that that is a problem. That is a big problem. And uh, we're starting to see that in the emerging markets where their currencies have been, have been even weaker. Look at in Brazil, in the last six months, oil price has gone up by 91.4% annualized basis. Even in Iran, even though it's an oil producing country, oil price has gone up. And they're having riots there now. We could very well have riots uh, uh, here in the in the Western world if oil price continues to go up. It's going to affect everything. Uh, Nasdaq, see, do you think gold will go back to a uh, to one hundred and forty dollars? No, I don't think so. One hundred and forty dollars. I think the last time it was there was in the nineteen seventies. So I don't see it going to one hundred and forty dollars. Uh, Eric Z, uh, what price over spot would you recommend buying coins at? Well, it depends. Uh, I mean, uh, the premium changes. Uh, just try to find the best uh, dealer with the best, uh, you know, the least premium. Uh, sometimes you're not going to be able to get a, a, a very good price. SDAC, can you post link of Steam it, please? Oh, yeah, hold on a second. Let me get it. Uh, yeah, there, there's a lot of photos in the, the Steam it post I did yesterday. Here it is. Uh, let's have a look. What else? Alan Mayer, uh, will 500 ounces uh, of silver get me over this crash coming? 500 ounces is a good amount. And I mean, also, you know, it depends, um, you know, what kind of uh, circumstances you're under, your lifestyle. But uh, the more the better, of course. But 500 ounces is a good amount. Uh, Patrick, hi, Mario, watched your Bank of England vlog. Caduceus was news to me. Yeah, to me as well. You know, I just left the museum, and right at the entrance on the left was that, uh, you know, Caduceus. And I didn't really – I always thought that was to do with medicine, but I looked it up later, and uh, it's the, you know, 
the staff of Hermes, uh, and you know, and, and uh, signifies Mercury, the god of uh, merchants, uh, thieves, <laughs> and uh, liars. Apparently, you know, and so that's interesting. That a lot of symbolism there. Vorza, how much of, can the dollar rise before emerging markets get into full blown crisis? And the U.S. stock market gets into trouble. I think we're already do, seeing it, you know. But uh, you know, we're already seeing it. And one thing I noticed: the dollar has been strong lately against the major currencies. But looking at the price of oil here in the last six months, uh, oil has gone up forty-eight percent against the dollar on an annual basis in the last six months. But against sterling, has gone up forty-nine. Against euro has gone up 51. So the dollar actually uh, has weakened a lot as well against real goods, against oil. So I think the strength in the dollar is not really, uh, especially against the major currencies, against the weaker currencies, the emerging markets, it is a problem, especially if oil continues to go up because they're going to have to, these uh, emerging market countries are going to have to keep uh, buying uh, dollars to pay for the oil. In instro flux. Hi, Mario. Do you think uh, cable will go below 130 with all the Brexit uncertainties continuing? Uh, uh, to be honest, I don't think Brexit has got anything to do with what the pound has been doing. The pound's been in the bear market since 2008 when it hit $2.11 just before the crisis. And uh, that's where it's going to keep going. Brexit is just a distraction. Uh, the UK has so much debt. The UK has so much inflation. Uh, you know, they're keeping rates at zero, completely manipulated. And it's going to get worse. Yeah, of course, it's going to go through uh, 130 again, but not because of Brexit. Brexit is just a scapegoat, in my opinion. And I've said that for the last two years. Nasdaq C, I don't know why a lot of conservatives like you hated Obama, even though the oil and gold rally so well. Um, I don't quite get what you are talking about. Um, I mean, during Bush, oil, uh, gold went from 250 to 1,000, right? So four times. Uh, I don't think it matters. I don't like, I didn't like Bush. I didn't like Obama, and I don't like Trump. So it's got nothing to do with the markets. There you go. Richard Mack, dollar gains are purely normal. I agree. Uh, we'll announce a gold by a house in the UK when crash comes. Thank you. Uh, yeah, that would be a complete collapse of the system, hyperinflation. That would be possible if that were to happen. Normally, uh, nah, I would say if things don't get out of hand, uh, yeah, I think you might need some more ounces uh, to buy a house, but a lot less than you need right now. Houses are, yeah, they're artificially, uh, they're being kept artificially high the prices because interest rates are being kept artificially low because UK financial institutions, 60% of their liabilities or two thirds almost are uh, housing, uh, you know, loans, mortgages and uh, commercial papers. So they need to keep the housing up or else the UK bank banking system will implode. But with what's happened with oil now, a lot of people are going to be hard up. Because everything's going to start to go up in price because oil affects all other prices. And I'm not saying that oil creates inflation. It's the consequence of it, but it's a mechanism through which the inflation that they've had the last 10 years, all the money printing uh, comes through. Yeah, hyperinflation, you know, if you've got gold and silver, you're, you're laughing. Uh, We'll have to see if that happens. If it does happen, it could ha happen very quickly. 
Yeah, I heard about the story uh, that uh, this guy found a gold coin in Germany uh, and he was able to buy a hotel. Robert Johnston, after the World Cup, the global reset is happening. Get your money out of the bank and buy, buy metals. Could be. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Richard Mack, if food prices go up much more, I'm going to starve soon. Uh, well, I was looking at the soft commodity prices. They haven't even started to go up that much. But I think they will now, you know, with the price of oil going up. It affects, you know, transportation, fertilizers. It could get pretty nasty. Especially it's already getting nasty in the emerging markets, you know. Uh, that's why they're having problems. Robert Johnson, Trump, Putin, and China are going to reset the system after the World Cup. NASDAQ C, Goldman tops 100 million in fees from Fox Disney deal. Well, good for Goldman. Well, Goldman is leveraged uh, over 500 to one, uh, the amount of derivatives they have, which is over $40 trillion, 400 to one to their shareholders equity. So uh, yeah, that's Goldman. Smugman Maneko, how long do you really think this can stay propped up for? Well, uh, I think we're close to uh, a tipping point. And that's why I'm talking about the oil price, and I think that could be the tipping point. Uh, I know oil is nowhere near 150 uh, in U.S. dollars, but in all the other currencies, if you look back, uh, you know, 10, 20 years ago, we are very close to the all-time highs uh, in all the other currencies. So it could. Uh, bring the whole world economy down. Savio Toronto. Yeah, that's a new pillow. Uh, it's uh, one of my viewers. Uh, that's his thumbnail. That's the flag of Wyvern. That's the uh, the English, kind of the English flag before the Norman Conquest in 1066. The Anglo uh, Anglo-Saxon flag. Uh, it's actually, sorry, it's the West Sussex flag, the Kingdom of West Sussex. Yeah, uh, gold, I think, yeah, gold is uh, definitely, uh, you know, it's come down today. But uh, with what oil is doing, I think gold is going to, you know, we're, it doesn't have too much more downside, in my opinion, and it's still holding really well against the other currencies. For example, today, gold is down half a percent, but the pound is down 0.8 of percent. The euro is down three quarters of a percent. So, uh, you know, gold is actually outperforming uh, in Europe. Why the big banks are in trouble? Well, because... The big banks are highly leveraged. They uh, they uh, window dress uh, the leverage every quarter, and the BIS even admitted to that. Uh, what else? The banks, uh, they haven't fixed anything. They're still uh, gambling uh, with uh, clients' monies. Uh, yeah, so nothing's changed since 08. They're heavily involved in derivatives, and... Uh, yeah, I think uh, they're going to go, and hopefully, you know, they'll go for good because they don't deserve, you know, Goldman Sachs doesn't deserve to be in business. They should have been uh, left to collapse in 08, and all the other banks would have collapsed. You know, Lehman's, Morgan Stanley was on in line, uh, uh, Bank of America, Merrill Lynch, Goldman Sachs, they would all have all gone. They don't deserve to be around. Uh, so their, you know, the, you know, their business model is, is not sustainable. And that's why I don't try to deal too much with banks.
Yes, silver has gotten hammered, especially uh, two, you know, two Fridays ago when it was breaking out really well. But uh, I still, you know, silver is heavily undervalued, especially with where oil is right now. So, uh, yeah. Lee Sutherland, do you prefer holding some smaller gold coins or just one ounce? My favorites are sovereigns, so that's just under an ounce, a quarter of an ounce. Uh, one ounce coins are nice as well, you know, half ounce. It doesn't matter, whatever you can get your hands on. Do Swiss, Chinese, Russian banks do virtual things like derivatives? Of course, I mean, the Swiss banks are high, high, you know, heavily into the derivatives. Uh, I'm not too sure about the Russian or the Chinese banks, but uh, the Chinese banking system is also highly leveraged. I don't think the Russians are as leveraged. Gina Chu Chong, what do you think the next global currency will be? Uh, gold, not euros, gold. Gold will be the base of the next system because all the currencies we have now are trash. They're all fiat. They've got, <laughs> they're just trash. They've been printed out of thin air and confidence is gonna be lost in them. And the only, uh, money people will have confidence in will next be gold. So they'll have to bring gold back back into the system. It will rise, you know, like a phoenix, like the 1998, 1988 Economist uh, cover. It's gold, and the paper money will be destroyed. Uh, UBS and Credit Suisse, yeah, I mean, they, they are, uh, you know, SBC doesn't, Swiss Bank Corporation was taken over few years ago by UBS or Credit Suisse. But the Swiss banks are even worse. I mean, because they're, they got, they're so much, so leveraged, you know, many times over the Swiss economy. But then, you know, so is the Swiss National Bank. Uh, they've printed trillions to buy uh, FANG stocks. Smaller private banks as well in Switzerland. Uh, the whole, you know, all the small banks in Switzerland, who do you think they bank with? <laughs> they have their accounts with the ma major banks. So no bank will be safe. No system will be safe. Not anywhere in the world. Sharon Chowdhury, what will be the effect on the economy financial system when the baby boom generation drop out of the labor market? That's already happening, uh, Sharon, uh, and it's going to keep going to the I mean, 2030 is the demographics. Yeah. That's why it's harder to get um, the taxes. That's why the governments are, have such heavy, heavy deficits because, you know, there's Back in the 50s and 60s, the welfare state could be financed because there's only one retired person and seven people working. Now it's like only one, uh, there's one retired person and only two people working. So it's really hard to keep the welfare state going. Pop home player. Do you think gold will be confiscated again in the US? No, no, I don't think so. I uh, don't think, you know, enough people have gold, so they have to confiscate it. Kristen Grimes, gold-backed crypto is the way, but what happens to Bitcoin? Um, still, a, I think there's still room for Bitcoin. Cyber Toronto, how do uh, banks get out of derivatives? Well, they have to close their positions. <laughs> if they can close it at a at a profit, the other, the, the thing is that uh, these derivatives are highly, uh, how can I say, illiquid, especially the over-the-counter derivatives. And if uh, the financial system gets uh, under pressure, liquidity just evaporates and uh, 
the problem with the derivatives, if they start, you know, when the underlying uh, assets of these bets start going down, the price of the derivatives go, goes down even more because they're highly leveraged. And a lot of times, for example, they take a nominal amount of like a trillion in these derivatives. And if they have to take a big loss, like 5%, it will completely, it could be a big problem. So yeah, uh, it's easy to get out when things are fine and calm. There's not much volatility and fear in the market. But when things get ugly, it's very difficult. It becomes very illiquid. John Lee, God's money or gold and silver. Government money is fiat. People's money is crypto. I uh, tend to agree. Silver is also, you know, there's a saying that uh, gold is a uh, king's money. You know, the uh, silver is a gentleman's money and uh, fiat is a slave's money. That's what they say. Will hedge funds derivatives be used to keep Bitcoin at bay? No, I don't think so. I don't think there's a way to stop uh, Bitcoin. Kristen Grimes, the media is controlled by the same occult, occult, uh, uh, the, the same who run the system. CIA sees everything. Yeah, I mean, there was a German uh, journalist a few years ago who said that the CIA, uh, you know, involved. Operation Mockingbird talks about that as well. Uh, Roy Stock, do you see any banking bank merger in the coming emergency? That's possible. You know, JP Morgan is always playing that game, but we'll have to see. So uh, I'm going to I need to uh, go a bit earlier today, so I'll do another two, two or three questions if you guys don't mind. Um, got some stuff to do later on. Lix59, there isn't enough computational power in the world to hack Bitcoin. I agree, but quantum computers are not ready yet. Uh, H. Cone, do you know anything about the po potash market? No, I don't. Sorry. Uh, Savio Toronto, why is there a difference between price of physical delivery and derivative paper? Uh, I, I assume you mean uh, in the precious metals? Well, because paper is just paper. It's not the real thing. That's why there's a difference. Because in the derivatives... The bullion banks just, they can sell uh, gold that they don't have. So it's not really based on reality. Sam Bradbury, hi, Maneco. Would you say 10 ounces of gold, 100 ounces of silver, and 1.2 bitcoins a fair spread? Yeah, yeah, seems fair to me. Uh, thank you, uh, Shane. Uh, Triple A, are you aware of the artificial telepathy? No, I haven't heard about that. Sorry. Uh, good looking honky. We need to stop being dependent on other countries' oil. Uh, I'm not sure is the dependency on other countries' oil is just the price of oil. I think the U.S. produces a lot of oil right now. So there you go. Uh, so last question here from Ricky Bobby. What premium is acceptable from silver uh, spot price? Good job. Oh, you want? Well, uh, you know, I, I don't know. You know, here in the UK, it would be different. I would look around at the different dealers. And uh, right now, probably, I don't know, 1% to 2%, uh, I would say, is the premium in the spot. So that's it. So. Uh, Thanks, everyone, for showing up. 
I hope you enjoyed this live stream. The next live stream will be Sunday night, 9 p.m. London, uh, 4 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. And uh, thanks, everyone, for showing and the interest, the support, and the donations. Uh, take care, and I'll talk to you later. Bye.